so today we'll see what are the success points of this classical free electron theory and what are the failure of this classical free electron theory okay so what are the successful points of this theory so that includes it verifies ohm's law so this theory successfully verifies ohm's law or it proves ohm's law that is v equal to i into r otherwise ohm's law is given by j is equal to that is current density j is equal to sigma into e where sigma is the electrical conductivity e is the electric field applied okay so that is successfully proved by this theory then it derives widman frange law okay it proves widman frange law that is k by sigma is directly proportional to temperature the thermal conductivity to the electrical conductivity ratio is directly proportional to the observed temperature that is proved by this classical theory then it explains the electrical and thermal conductivity of metals okay so it successfully explains the uh, relation of electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity of metal is successfully explained by this theory and also it explains optical properties of metals so these are the few properties of the metal which have been explained using the free electron theory but compared to these success points there are much more points on the failure side okay so most of the uh, phenomena cannot be explained using free electron theory there it fails we'll consider that one by one so what are the limitations of this free electron theory what are the failure of this free electron theory so first one it does not give satisfactory explanation as to why certain metals like copper and silver have high conductivity okay why this copper silver uh, they have higher conductivity compared to uh, the iron aluminum okay compared to them so this copper and silver are having higher conductivity that cannot be explained using this classical theory because classical theory gives the expression for sigma as n e square to divided by m mass of the electron number of free electrons present in the metal so they are all constants okay for a given metal but it cannot explain why particular material is having a higher conductivity it only gives the conductivity come to explain a variation of resistance of pure metals and the temperature of liquid helium so at a low temperature why the resistance of the metals varies basically it is the phenomenon of superconductivity so resistance decreases as the temperature decreases and the resistance becomes zero at a particular temperature called critical temperature so that corresponding that particular phenomena cannot be explained using classical theory why resistance decreases with temperature so that cannot be explained using this theory okay that is very very low temperature of the temperature of liquid helium then third point according to free electron theory the specific heat of the metal is given by cv is equal to 3 by 2 r okay i, I think in kinetic theory of gases you have studied the specific heat at constant volume of the gas is cv is equal to 3 by r similar to that this electrons have uh, contributing to the specific heat then specific heat of the metal is given by cv is equal to 3 by 2 r according to this theory as per this equation cv is independent of temperature so it says that cv is equal to 3 by 2 r so it's it says that cv is independent of temperature the specific heat is constant for all the metals but that is not true okay because r is constant so cv is going to be constant for all the metals so this particular law is called as dulong and petit's law but experimentally this cv is observed to be directly proportional to temperature okay so this discrepancy cannot be explained using this classical theory okay so according to classical theory the specific heat is independent of temperature but experimentally it is observed that the specific heat is directly proportional to temperature so there is a discrepancy in this theory and the experimental observation that cannot be explained then fourth point 
the mean free path of the free electron calculated using free electron theory of metals is found to be very much less compared to the experimentally observed mean free path okay so mean free path lambda that is calculated using this theory using the thermal conductivity and electric conductivity expression so that is observed to be very much smaller compared to the experimental observations so there is a discrepancy in the observation of mean free path in experimental observation and this uh, classical free electron theory and here it fails then fifth point it cannot explain the temperature dependence of electrical conductivity properly so according to this classical free electron theory let us see the electrical conductivity of metal is given by sigma is equal to n e square tau divided by m okay that is the expression we have obtained and this relaxation time tau can be given by lambda by velocity free mean free path divided by velocity so substitute here substitute for tau you will get sigma is equal to n e square lambda by m into v and let us see how this sigma depends on temperature but we have half m e square is equal to 3 by 2 kbt okay that is in accordance with classical theory therefore v is equal to square root of 3 kbt by m 2 2 gets cancelled you will get v is equal to 3 kbt by m under square root so this shows that the velocity of the electron is directly proportional to square root of temperature that is it in accordance with classical theory therefore if you substitute here here velocity is function of temperature where velocity is directly proportional to square root of temperature it implies that the electrical conductivity sigma is directly proportional to 1 by square root of t it is inversely proportional to square root of temperature that is the uh, temperature dependence observed in accordance with the free electron theory but experimentally what is observed it is observed that sigma is directly proportional to 1 by t but according to this classical theory sigma is directly proportional to 1 by square root of temperature so therefore it fails to explain this discrepancy so it is clear that the prediction of classical free electron theory is not in agree agreement with the experimental observation even though it explains electrical conduction and thermal conduction the temperature dependence of the electrical conductivity cannot be explained so according to classical theory this electrical conductivity is inversely proportional to square root of temperature but experimentally it is observed that electrical conductivity is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature there is no square root so this discrepancy cannot be explained using classical theory next sixth point will take so it cannot explain the dependence of electrical conductivity on electron concentration okay so temperature dependence explain madli kaagilla and it cannot explain the electron concentration dependence also let us see as per the classical free electron theory as per the classical free electron theory the electrical conductivity of metal is given by sigma is equal to n e square tau divided by m that is the expression okay so this implies sigma is directly proportional to n you look at this expression so according to this expression sigma that is electrical conductivity is directly proportional to n what is n n is the electron concentration that is number of free electrons present in unit volume of the conductor if there is more electron concentration electrical conductivity has to be more that is in accordance with this theory hence according to classical free electron theory bivalent and trivalent metals should possess much higher electrical conductivity than monovalent metals okay what do you mean by bivalent and trivalent bivalent means the metal having two free electrons trivalent means the metal uh, the atom having three free electrons so in bivalent and trivalent each atom can give two or three free electrons one atom only 
ಎರಡು ಅಥವಾ ಫ್ರೀ ಎರಡು ಅಥವಾ ಮೂರು ಫ್ರೀ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಮೋನೋವೆಲೆಂಟ್ ಮೆಟಲ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಸೊ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಬೈವೆಲೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ರೈವೆಲೆಂಟ್ ಮೆಟಲ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ದೇ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ದರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೇ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕಲ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರರಿ ಟು ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮೋನೋವೆಲೆಂಟ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಕಾಪರ್ ಕಾಪರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಮೋನೋ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೋನೋವೆಲೆಂಟ್ ಮೋನೋವೆಲೆಂಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ವೆಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ವೆಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದನ್ ಜಿಂಕ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೈವೆಲೆಂಟ್ and aluminum which is trivalent so according to this theory the metal which is having higher electron concentration should have higher electrical conductivity but experimentally the monovalent elements have higher conductivity compared to bivalent and trivalent so this cannot be explained and this fails to explain this particular point so why particular metals have higher conductivity and some metals have lower conductivity that cannot be explained by this theory so thus the prediction of classical free electron theory that sigma is is directly proportional to n does not always holds good it never or sometimes it not holds good hence classical free electron theory fails to explain the dependence of sigma on n so how this electrical conductivity depends on the free electron concentration cannot be explained by this theory okay then last one it cannot explain the discrepancy between lorentz number we have seen the wedel friend law according to free electron theory the lorentz number predicted in wedel friend law is l equal to 3 kb square divided by 2e square it is having the value 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 8 si units but experimentally it is observed that lorentz number is 2.44 into 10 to the power minus 8 si units so there is a huge difference almost the experimental observation is two times larger compared to the theoretically predicted lorentz number so this cannot be explained using free electron theory idu kuda explain madlikke as a free electron theory cannot explain this particular uh, discrepancy also so here it fails okay so these are the the some of the observations that cannot be explained by free electron theory 